you ready for a brand new baby? Tom was here and the time is right for dancing in the street. Dance Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something, 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 something's, something's wrong. I mean, hold on. Okay, here we go. There we go. I was trying to do something special for the 50th episode, Ken's Corner, and it turned out horribly wrong. So I'm just going to say welcome to the 50th episode of Ken's Corner. Of course, we have Ken, and of course, we want you, we're calling out around the world, not to dance in the street, because that might be dangerous considering the breakdown of our, <laughs> of our laws, but <laughs> yeah, we do want you to call you out to join us to celebrate 50 episodes, Ken's Corner. And without further ado, let me say welcome to my good friend, Ken. How are you? Good to see you. What's going on, Jay? What's happening? I'm I'm here and I made it through Easter. It was, ah. it was difficult, but I, I did. But then again, you know, what I might call difficult is really first world problems, aren't they? Yep. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna see a lot of first world problems, but they're still problems, but uh they're getting they're getting a little bit more hairy. Uh ah. speaking of problems, uh let's talk about your shirt. Stay classy, Iraq. Yes, stay classy uh, indeed. <laughs> It's from my Ranger buddies again. They they have this um this uh, Ranger up and um on the back. I'm not going to turn around, but on the back it says surges. Sixty percent of the time they work every time, and it's when we did the surge. So you can you can figure that out in your head. It's a it's a you know it's a blast on their their what they what they did to make sense of everything. But um it's an old shirt. It's about I don't know. It's about twenty years old. Or well, let's see. When did we go in? Let's see. When we went into Iraq. When was the surge? Oh, that was 2006 to 2007, I want to say. Yeah, so yeah, so almost 20 years, almost 20 or 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is an old shirt. So, that but is, it look how that it looks. Is, hey, it looks great. It, and you know, you got Saddam looking classy. All yes. he's missing is like a cigarette and and the yeah. guy from, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Paradise Island, Fantasy Island. <laughs> the plane, the plane, you know? The plane. <laughs> I love it. Love so it. I do want to go ahead and say thank you to everybody who's watched us. This is 50 episodes. We're very grateful. And, uh, you know, we had some great comments last week. So go yes, ahead and run us through those comments and those thank yous that you have yep. for us. Got it. Okay, guys, remember to like, share, and comment. It's how YouTube gets, uh, you know, and even Rumble, I guess, you know, pushes the message out to more people. But, um, uh, once again, there's too many people to list, um, but I have, here's a few comments, all right? I have six comments uh, from Holy Yoli. Hello, Ken and Jay. I really enjoy true in information, not just in this country, but in other countries and update updates. Glad to see you, Ken. Blessing to you both. Uh, from Martin Wilma and Wilma Bohr. Um, always good to see you both. I'm so glad Ken is doing well. Blessings and keep on going, brothers. From Perfect. Thank you, guys. What times we live in, insanity. God bless you both, born-again Christians and all, all over the world. And um, uh, second note, Shannon DeVoy, Ken, come back to South Africa. You won't recognize it, my friend. I can honestly say my country is under God's judgment. So much I can say about this. Uh, it's from Shannon DeVoy. Well, Shannon, um, I just want to say hey to all my Chinas out there. And if you're wondering, if you're uh, your American viewer, wondering what a China is, that's a, that's a friend in South Africa. So I just want to say that to Shannon. Um, and uh, Robert Thamby, does Ken watch Dutch Sense on YouTube? Yes, I do watch Dutch Sense. Um, on April 8th, earthquake forecaster. He keeps getting shut down by the USGA. Yeah. And I don't know who else in the government. He just keeps putting out that last um, about a third hour before being shut down. So I don't know what that means, but. Anyway, uh, last one, Janitor for Jesus. Great episode once again, my brothers. hi -ya. Thank you, Jesus, for being merciful to our dear brother, Ken. Thank you, Lord. Ken and Jay, may the Lord continue to be glorified in your lives, brothers. 2 Corinthians 14, 14. Awesome. Thank you so much for the comments, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, I just would like to say, uh, rather than disappoint everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we forgot. And I also want to say, in honor of Easter, 
I had this, this, this saying that I came across. I thought it was fantastic. If Christ is risen, nothing else matters. And if Christ is not risen, nothing else matters. So I just want to say, True he's word. risen. True he's word. risen indeed. Yep, absolutely. All right, we have some breaking news. Uh, yes. The Middle East is being pushed one step closer to the apocalypse as Israel has decided in its infinite wisdom to bomb Damascus <laughs> while yes. the Iranians were in the building next to their target. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Damascus, and we see Isaiah 17, 1, still hasn't been fulfilled yet. I, I think it's turned to glass. It says Isaiah, you know, he says uh, Damascus lies as a ruinous heap, but we're getting we're getting close. Anytime I see Damascus, I want to report on it. But in an absolutely stunning move today, earlier, you know, you know midnight, one o'clock, whatever it was, but it was still today. Um, and we're taping on Monday. So Israel took out the head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard in Syria. So needless to say, the Iranians are absolutely furious and promised a harsh response. The building that was destroyed by the IDF airstrike was reportedly next to Iran's embassy in Damascus. The Syrian government says that the missiles that destroyed the building were fired from Gaza, sorry, Golan Heights. Sorry, the Gaza in my mind, Golan Heights. The IDF appeared to be targeting a gathering of very important regional leaders. Killed were Mohammad Reza Zahedi, he's head of the Revolutionary Guard, head onch, and as well as Haji Rahimi, very high up military commander. Both those guys were killed. Now, now we wait for a response from Iran. Um, how far both sides can push one another before uh, events spiral completely out of control. Get your big popcorn out. That's it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Crazy. yeah. You know, I believe in response, uh, Joe Biden had to say that he prefers Rocky yeah. Road tonight. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, uh, but the, hey, God's in charge. The Lord is in charge of everything. That's why we can joke about this. It's like, you know, the Lord is in charge and he's coming back, man. Jesus is coming back. Very quickly, as it seems. Yeah. Seems like it's 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 rotating and coming forward more and more and faster and faster. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, also, you know, we covered a little bit about it on catching up with Jacob, but you've got some more detailed intel from mm -hmm. Laura Logan on the bridge in Baltimore that yes. potentially might not it might not be such an accident, right? No, no. And then just a brief observation, because you guys already covered it on catching up. But I just wanted to point out Laura Logan's intel source. And 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 um, and they claim that the attack on the second biggest strategic roadway from the hazardous from ha for hazardous materials was an absolute brilliant strategic attack on the U.S. So a critical infrastructure, most likely cyber and or, <clears throat> and our intel agencies know it. So that, that's one thing that they're not sharing at all. Uh, the bridge was built to specifically move hazardous materials, fuel, diesel, propane, gas, ni nitrogen, highly flammable materials, chemical um, chemicals, and oversized cargo that cannot fit in the tunnels. This is now crippled. They say four to five years to rebuild. Some say 10 years. So half a mile the bridge went into the river. The attack was perfectly targeted. We're in a free fall ride on a roller coaster right now. No brakes, just picking up speed. That was a quote from one of the intel agents. So the footage shows the cargo ship never got in the approach lane in the channel. So you have to be in the channel before you get into that turn. Location was precise, deliberate. Chose a bend in the river where you have to slow down and commit yourself. All right, it continues. Once you are committed in that area, there is not enough room to maneuver. We should have had a har you know, they should have a har they should have had a harbor pilot to pilot the boat. You are not supposed to traverse any obstacles without the harbor pilot. So they chose a full moon, so you would have maximum tidal shift, rise and fall, a brisk flow in that river on a normal day, and and have a lot of rain recently. So water was already moving at a good pace. So they hit the bridge. Uh, it was enough kinetic energy to knock the load-bearing pylon out from under the highway, which fatally weakened the span, and then 50% of the bridge fell into the water. We all saw it. All these factors, this is how you teach people how to do this and a, as a type of attack. And there are a few people left in the system who know this. 
So we have a junior varsity team uh, on the field. So tremendous, tremendous navigational obstruction, huge logistical nightmare to clean this up. The number of dead is tragic, but that was not the whole major of the attack. You got to see that when you choke off Baltimore, you have cut off north south hazardous uh, the the main north south hazardous corridor, the I the I ninety five in half. Now you have to go around the city or somewhere else. For every hundred dollars that goes into the city, twelve comes from shipping. That's a hundred dollars that goes into city. Twelve dollars comes from shipping. That's a lot. This will cripple the city of Baltimore at a time when they do not have resources to recover. And that's for Intel. That's what her Intel guys. So mm. there's a good, good little rant on on Twitter that she posted. And then she was on uh, Steve Bannon and she ranted about it. So didn't you mention that the black box of the ship also? Yes. Had some, yes. Had some missing time marks. Yes. That's uh yes. Yes. Let's go through that. That's um uh, on my um my later videos. We're going to show uh uh, the video number seven, but um, the Dolly ship's black box has two minutes of missing data right before it crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. If you cannot see the absolute crazy, I don't know what I, I don't know what to say. So within two hours, the Biden administration declared that this was not terrorism. So I wonder how the Las Vegas shooting investigation is coming. And then that same police chief went to Maui, wondering how the Maui fire, you know, damage is going. Yeah, don't get me started. So no, anyway, he's gonna, here's he's gonna the be sidebar. A, what, he's going to be, be a forensic architect uh, that's oh, going to, try, you know, declare it geez, was definitely like, an accident. It, it's, it's crazy. And and here's here's a sidebar. Check this out. The day before the barge crash, a special new agent in charge of the Baltimore field office was named. The, a, a different, F, a new FBI agent. So the day before... So it looks like um, Christopher Ray's cover of man's already there. So um, you can't make this stuff up, man. But yeah, so remind me not to go over that when we get to my stories. But uh, yeah, that's crazy. And that's, Absolutely. That's, that's, sorry, that's, sorry to steal your thunder there. Sure you that, was a good, that was a good relation. So we can get that done with. Good. All right. Now, uh, in news, also dealing with the East Coast here, kind of, Philadelphia has decided to lower its fitness standards not for, you know, firemen, of course we need firemen, but, but for yeah. police, because, you know, yeah. police, they mainly just need to eat donuts, according to yeah. Philadelphia. <laughs> so the police uh, force is now looking for anyone who's willing for that terrible job, just so yeah, that they can capture goes. someone and they can be released. Yep. Yep. So last week I mentioned the falling recruitment numbers, right? I, I talked about it briefly. So Philadelphia is faced with gaping vacancies in its police force and concerns about public safety. In order to get more candidates in the door, the department is lowering its standard for physical fitness for new cops. To close the gap, poli pol policies on tattoos, previous drug use, physical fitness, and college credits are all being reconsidered. Across the country, struggling police departments are also offering incentives to get new cops through the door. Los Angeles is offering housing subsidies. Washington, D.C. is offering signing bonuses of more than $20,000. And several states have ex expanded eligibility to non-citizens, so illegals. So others have charged or sorry, have changed the minimum age of officers to 18. So since the fitness adjustments took effect, 51% of people testing have passed compared to 36% previously. That's a crazy number. So officers are resigning or retiring um, at higher rates than applicants are becoming officers. So they're trying to change that. We talked about that briefly last week. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. Well, so the, a, a new police force that is has yeah. no incentive for American values if they're, you know, legals. Nope. Uh, a new a new police force of 18 year olds who are highly impressionable that are probably going to follow the command no matter what. And on top of that, um, basically uh, sign on bonuses that are tantamount to like almost like the United States Army. You know, you, you get a bonus yeah. if you sign on, you yeah, know, that's... extra cash to, yeah. to party with if you decide to go to war. Whoop, whoop. Interesting. Yep. <laughs> now. As as crazy as that all sounds, that is nothing. That's not even 
that's not even the tip of an iceberg. That That is like an ice cube inside of a glass of iced tea compared to this next story. This next story, a museum in the UK has declared as fact, yeah. as fact, yeah. that dinosaurs are gay and birds yes. identify as queer. Yes. The birds do not procreate. They have surrogate fertilization. Yep. Yep, that's yeah, yeah. The dinosaurs they have an LB, LGBTQ history. It's crazy. A museum in Brazil, Britain, has claimed that some birds are queer and that the history of animal queerness has been hidden from the public. So all these claims are totally nonsense, of course. But um, one of the most ridiculous claims of this museum is the description of a fossilized dinosaur footprint that states: "This is a quote." We cannot comment on the sexuality of the dinosaur who made this footprint, but we do know that the 11-year-old boy who found it is now grown up, happily married to his husband, Greg, in a pink house in Hastings. That was a quote. <laughs> that was how they figured Oh, I don't even want to go into it. The museum One of added- things is not like not the other? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the museum added queer history takes many forms, and in this case, it makes- up an important part of the fossil pro provenance. Soon children will be taught that old McDonald had a queer farm and that samurai warriors in ancient Japan were really transgender. So that's just a short little story, just just showing how how the mentality of, of yeah, it's just, you can't think, it's a debased mind. They have a debased mind. So the Romans won all the way. Romans oh, won, yeah. Been, let's, yeah. Let's yeah. be bad. Pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, to add to this beautiful clown show that we have in, in modern society, <laughs> in modern life, here are some videos of what Big Brother has decided to pay attention to. Yes. Can we just move in front of the house so the dogs don't go crazy? Yeah, we can, yeah. So. I need you to identify yourself and let me take imagery of your IDs. I'm like a shame like Rachel's on the file. Um, so you said you were with the FBI? That's correct. And why won't you show me your credentials? The beard. I didn't let really take a look at them. I said, one second, I'll be right back. Are you going to show me your credentials or no? Yeah, we did already. So, and we identified ourselves. So, what we'd like to do. I didn't look at your credentials again. Well, I didn't verify them. I, w I told you to wait and I went inside. Okay. That's correct. What we'd like to do is just have a conversation with you about some sort of thing you made. Would you be willing to talk to us to me about that? No, I would not. I would like you to later talk on with my lawyer. Okay. Do you have identification you have cards? cards? No. Yeah. No. I'll get back to you. Okay. Right. You might have your attorney uh, talk to the FBI office, though, Oklahoma City. What's the number? What are the names of the agents? I'll Google it for you. So you're freezing to identify yourselves? No, we might be acting by this. Again, I did not take a look. Okay, so the phone number for the FBI in Oklahoma City is 405-290-770. Okay. It's possible. Contact the cell if you have to this book. And tell him that Facebook flagged me for posts. Uh, Facebook gave us to go. It's great, awesome. You're a cow. Okay. So we no longer live in a free country and we can't say okay. what we want? No, we totally do. That, that's why we're not here to arrest or anything like that. We well, you can't that. arrest me for freedom of speech. We live in America. Yes, right. Exactly. So it's kind of weird that you want to come talk to me about me exercising my freedom of speech. We do this every day, all day long. I was talking to people. Okay. For to keep everybody safe, like sure nobody has the mean will at that and says or anything like that. Like we've got no reason to believe necessarily that that's you, and that's why we would tell me that. So do you have a conversation with everybody on the neighborhood? Uh, do you have information to anybody else in the neighborhood? I mean, all I've done is exercise my right as an American citizen on a public social media platform with my personal opinions. Correct? Okay. Mo most of the individuals. Right. In America, especially older generation. Right. Have Facebook. Are you questioning all the citizens in America? We will certainly have political. Can we please go to Keystone? 
Okay, so you have concerns about my personal opinions? If you don't want to talk to us, then... I'm definitely not going to have a talk with you. Well, thank you for your time this morning. I'm so free to reach out to us. Okay, they're so-called FBI. And get the license plate. There you go. There you go. That's whacked out. This I'm is Rolad Del Jawad in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. This is America. Great use of taxpayer money right there. Great use. Yeah. Isn't that, uh, isn't that just absolutely whack? That is. That's that's. We, that's, have, we have another video though. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was two 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 people. Yeah, two videos have gone viral on Twitter. Let let let's watch this one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's his uh, his uh, place now. You know. He looks down at the mat. <laughs> Smiles. So that's the full recording that I have. Now, um, right after that video cut off, I gave him my number to call me because it was very choppy. As you can see, I was repeating stuff. So I talked to Mr. Highland on the phone. And by the way, as far as I know, this is an actual FBI agent who works with the actual FBI. And this is a LinkedIn page showing that FBI agent who works in my city. So conspiracy theorists, most likely that's the FBI, okay? People don't make badges and show up to random people's houses and then record themselves talking to them impersonating agents. Just side notes. Now, I would never drop a recorded phone call with the FBI, even if I had one, so you're going to have to take my word for this next part. I, I talked to this agent on the phone. The agent said that they were at my house and the only thing that they could tell me is it was in regards to my social media. I asked them if it was about a specific post on my social media and the reply from the agent was, no, we looked at your social media and found nothing illegal. We are just here to check off a box, it's procedure. To which I replied, you need to talk to my attorney. I have told you guys, be prepared for anything and that includes the FBI coming to your house. So. My attorney reached out to them five seconds after I got off the phone with them, which was five minutes after I talked to them. They did not answer. They have not returned my attorney's call to this date. We have no further information. I have also reached out to more than one journalist and they have reached out as far as I know and have not heard back either. So the FBI is showing up to people's houses that aren't committing crimes and trying to check off boxes. Let me know what you think of that. Hmm. Those are two crazy videos, buddy. Those are, those are, those are both of them. I know they're, they're just, they're lengthy, but it, you, you guys need to know what's going on, man. This is what's going on. Defund the FBI, maybe? I mean. Yeah, yeah. we'll defund all the, the, the alphabet companies, man. Yeah. Well, I'd they start with them. Absolutely. I'd start with them. They, 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 they're absolutely rogue. And then I have another, uh, you know, 
uh, uh, another Tucker Carlson uh, video coming up in the latter part. And that's even more disturbing. It's 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 they're coming after uh, they'll they'll come after conservatives first. And then, you know, Mark, when I've talked about this multiple times, conservatives first and then Christians are right up there with them. And that's but that but Jesus promised that is what we have to expect. So yep. we need to, yeah, just pray and be in his word. Speaking of Tucker Carlson, uh, the question that I think was asked is, who is Biden working for? In fact, uh, we have we have a clip of that. Uh, uh, it's that this one. If you watch the news, it seems like the Biden administration is no longer enforcing the law on any level. Everything is legal. Effectively, that would include rape and murder and sexualizing children, sex crimes against kids. That would include <clears throat> importing drugs into the country. That would include mass shootings. It would even include a full scale invasion of the country. Millions of people from foreign countries, most of them men, marching across the border like it's legal. So crimes are no longer being punished. That's the conclusion you might reach, but that's not actually true. There are still crimes. They've just been redefined. The Biden administration is a law and order operation with a very different focus. Here's one example. On October 5th, 2022 at 7 a.m., a man called Paul Vaughn woke up to armed FBI agents with guns banging on the front door of his home in Tennessee. So he steps outside to find agents with their weapons drawn, pointed at him. They promptly handcuffed him and threw him in the back of an SUV. They did this in front of his wife and children. His wife, completely confused, asking why the man she thought was her law-abiding husband was being arrested. What are you doing? And they ignored her and instead hauled her husband off to jail. And by the way, we are not overstating this in any way. We know because she recorded it. Here's part of what happened. But if you're not going to let me, then I'll just... No, I want to know why you were banging on my door with a gun. Hey, let's go back to that. You're not going to tell me anything? No, no. I I tried. No, you didn't. You did not try. They always have new cars. Yeah, brand new. We're paying for it, too. This is not acceptable. So there you have it. Stormtroopers showed up at the house with rifles, not just handguns, rifles, weapons of war, battle rifles, the ones that Joe Biden is telling you you can't have. They showed up at Paul Vaughn's house to arrest him. So the question is, what exactly did he do? Was he a terrorist, a serial killer? Was he trying to invade the country? No. Paul Vaughn's crime, Paul Vaughn, the father of 11 children, had dared to pray and sing hymns in the hallway of an abortion clinic. In other words, he did what the Biden administration really fears. He prayed. And for doing that, he faces 11 years in prison. By the way, we're not overstating this. We're not simplifying it in a dishonest way. Those are the facts. Paul Vaughn joins us now, along with his lawyer, Steve Crampton, and we're grateful to have them both. Thank you very much for joining us. Mr. Vaughn, first to you, it, I just want to make absolutely clear, because I think this is the most clarifying thing that's happened in the last couple of years, that we're not leaving anything out. You are not accused of threatening anyone's life, stealing anything, invading anyone's country. You're facing 11 years in prison for praying and singing hymns at an abortion clinic. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. My, my main crime of the, the day I wasn't arrested by the local police was the charge. And my main crime was I talked to the police and talked to the media. Your crime is that you talked to the crime in Biden's America. So, do you have a criminal record? No. So you never imagined that praying would be a federal crime with a penalty of 11 years in prison? No, I, you know, I, I always thought praying was praying for our nation is what we were instructed to do. I thought that was what was required for freedom and liberty is to beseech the favors of God on our land and to uh, to reach out to him. And of course, you know, we were praying because our nation has allowed the sinful, atrocious action of abortion and killing in unborn children. Yes. And so that's ultimately what the you know, what the Biden DOJ doesn't like. 
and I, I mean, I, I'm trying to stifle my bitterness because I, I, I want to get information from you and not just take long uh, lectures and editorials. But I mean, is it, a, it must be a little strange for you to hear the endless sermons that we get from our government about how this or that country is authoritarian and they don't have freedom when you've been arrested for praying in the United States. Does that seem weird to you? You bet. Yeah, I love the, uh, the comparison with, uh, I forget, somebody threw it out on the on Twitter recently about the uh, Russia arresting somebody for, uh, you know, tweeting a, a meme about an election and, and giving them seven months in jail uh, for the same. Uh, and it turns out, of course, it was, you know, Biden's DOJ. And, and you interviewed the guy that, that was involved in that case. The same conspiracy a statute was used against him that was used against us. Yeah. What makes a what would be even if I had broken the law that day would be a six month misdemeanor under the FACE Act. But by throwing in the conspiracy charge, they make a, a misdemeanor into a decade long felony. How do you feel about the prospect of going to jail for praying? Thanks a lot for watching us on X. There is a lot more to see and you can find it on TuckerCarlson.com. We hope you'll join us. You know, Ken, I don't that's, know what the straw that's going to break this camel's back. But I don't either. You know, you you think about it like the Boston massacre. Mm -hmm. you know, it took it took <clears throat> them firing at the crowd to spark the revolution. You, mm -hmm. you know, it took one shot at Lexington and Concord yep. to, to to spark the the, the open rebellion. Um, it took uh, the first cannon shot. You know, of the of the of at Fort Sumter, what is going to be that point where people are going to be? This government must go. And do you think? I, you I think that might be like this election if they decide to 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 take away the selection that it might be uh, that that turning point. That might be it, and that might be when the country splits. You know, because I do know I've been talking about. Um, the country splitting up for a long time. And I do know that there's going to be, even if there's not like a secession or anything, there's going to be a split in, in it's going to be a noticeable split. Um, they'll, they'll be, I got so much to say on this. It's just a, a lot there. They'll, there's going to be a, yeah, well, there's going to be a, a, you do not want to get, you know, the special forces guys that they always talk about that you don't want to see them enter into the, the conflict. Um, that that's going to be a, a, a point of 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 just crazy. That's going to be a point of just a uh, wacko when they go in and and um, you just you know because they're they're yeah it's, it's it's just my mind's going all over the place right now. Well, because I'm, let me I'm let me to, try yeah. to let me try to focus it for you. Let, let's imagine that that order comes down, and whatever administration it will be starts saying. You know, we need to arrest these demonstrators. We need to arrest these people who are not friendly to the government. Those special forces, even the retired ones, let's call them the retired ones, the ones that are in mm -hmm. civilian life and seeing mm -hmm. the military turned on the civilian population to mm -hmm. now become a police force. Mm -hmm. Where do you think their loyalties are going to lie? Are they going to be with the people or are they going to be with the government? They will be the people that I know will be with the people. It's going to be 100% the people. And um, they're, 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 they're nasty, man. They, they, they've, uh, they don't have all the, the toys and all the gadgets maybe that, you know, and so, but they, they have the skills and they, they practice the skills and there's, um, I don't know how many millions of them, but there's only, uh, uh, you know, maybe, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 special, special forces that are available right now. No, that yeah. are that are active that are active duty, you know. Absolutely. Now, I would say that these past four years under Biden, we've seen a complete purge of yeah. the military. Yeah. Um, basically, anyone that does not agree with DEI, LGBTQ, <clears throat> yeah. those people have been forced to have early retirement. A lot of them, and they've been replacing them with compliant. Uh, yeah. officers and generals. Yeah. And it's, it's no accident. They're doing this right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's the spiritual aspect of it. It's, it's judgment. And we have to expect some type of judgment. Now, what I 
always ask is, you know, when, when, when would I fight back? Maybe I don't, I maybe, maybe I just, you know, I, I protect my wife and, and my family. Um, but I, you know, I don't go after anybody. I, I, you know, it's, if they come after me, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the Lord has in, in store. There's so many, yeah, that's why it's exciting kind of, you know, it's like, whatever, you know, cause I don't care. You know, I've almost died so many times. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like, you know, I got a short time on this planet left. Mm. And I don't want to leave my wife. I don't want to, you know, exit out of here, but it, it's the Lord's timing. So, yeah. but uh, yeah. Yeah. The denial of reality. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And you, you look at people who are, are cheerleading for groups like the FBI gr- group, yeah. like the, the department of justice today. Yeah. The DOJ. And yeah. I, I don't understand it. It's these people are either, paid very well for their compliance or there is such an immense um just pile of dirt on them that yeah. they're going to be slaves the rest of their life i mean i've seen i've seen the corruption i've seen it you know i i, I guess so. i don't know if i should share but you know my wife used to work for the doj i've, I've seen the screens i've seen you know I, I i can't say what's on them but you know they're there it's just it's just financial corruption we see the billions of dollars that they're they're sending to to you know Ukraine. It, it's it's nuts. Mm-hmm. And then I, I last week I shared you know that 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 two minute clip on um, on uh, I forget who uh, was talking about you know the eight hundred fifty thousand dollars for the you know the senior LBGTQ you know blah 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 all this mm. crazy money you know two million here you know three million fifteen million all this it's just it's it's like well, why why can't we put that into like um, just you know, homeless or whatever we, we, you know, or, or yeah, it's, it's, it's beyond crazy. Yep. It's definitely beyond crazy. Uh, you know, what else is crazy is a person in Starbucks, young lady wanted to have the deferred, uh, payments to her college, um, paid for by Starbucks. So she Mm -hmm. started working there, but Mm -hmm. because she refused to play by their rules of DEI and LGBTQ friendly policies, she was mm-hmm. fired. Here is a picture. Yeah. Her. I actually had a video of her too, but I just, you know, I mean, I, I, I spent a lot of, of, of time. That was that last video of Tucker was five minutes and the other two were, but that's her right there. And um, uh, the ordeal actually took place in 2022. Um, she was, she just uploaded a video on TikTok discussing what happened, but it's a Christian woman says that her, you know, fight, she got fired from, from, uh, Starbucks for refusing to use transgender transgender pronouns, and it's and, it, and it's against my faith to lie is what she said. So she began experiencing backlash for her work after standing firm in her Christianity, which is awesome. As I've said, the incident happened in 2022, but she uploaded the video after she finally became comfortable enough to finally speak out about her deal in the video. Her name is um, Taylor Marie Trice. Trice explained that she has been employed at Starbucks for two years, but during Pride Month in 2022, tensions at her work came to a head when she expressed reluctance about some of the stories, the store's activities. You can see like that, 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 that big pronoun thing had a whole bunch of stuff on it. She goes, what if kids read that? What are, you know, what are we going to do? So Trice said she had sought a job at Starbucks in order to secure a tuition reimbursement at, and had, and hadn't previously known much about the company's radical left values. She's kind of disconnected a little bit, but she said, I stayed there to get as much tuition reimbursement as I could and to be a good representative of Jesus before my time was up there. She also said, I have been blessed with other jobs since then that, and and is, is currently working as a house cleaner. And she goes, I know God will provide for me. So he sounds pretty solid as a Christian. Yeah, absolutely. Now, for those that are are listening on uh, the podcast, you should read the board real quick. Please try not to become sick. Mm. Let's talk about pronouns. Many people, transgenders and cisgenders use pronouns. Pronouns like she, her, he, him, they, them are <laughs> more commonly used. The new pronouns are the neo pronouns like zizim, zizum. It's it's and more are less common, but still valid. You can always mix and match. Many of our partners wear pronoun pins to help others respect their pre-severance. 
uh, I have no idea. Somebody does not know how to write the English language. It looks like pre preverence. Pre pre I don't know. I give up. I give up on the whole board. I give up <laughs> on the whole board. Yes. Yes. Anyway, uh, yeah, I would think uh, a lawyer would be in in very much interested in maybe helping that young lady, you know, maybe sue for a wrongful termination, maybe recouping her st student uh, loans fully from Starbucks. You know, it, nothing's going to change unless people start going after these companies yeah. that yeah, push yeah. this propaganda and I absolutely push agree. them to either yeah. be bankrupt yeah. yep. or to change their policies. And I think that it's going to be a fight back, fight back, fight back. But I think that they're pushing so hard that, that, that people are scared and people are just, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I try not to go to Starbucks for, for the, for this reason. I have yeah. a Starbucks, I have a Starbucks story, actually. Do you do? We, we were asked to leave from Starbucks. A, a friend what? of mine, we're, we're reading the Bible inside of Starbucks. What? Out in West Hills. And we were told that we were making some people uncomfortable oh by reading our Bibles inside and having coffee. Wow. Wow. I've never had that happen. Now, mind you, this wow. particular Starbucks was across the street from the Catholic Church. Oh, my God. Like, literally across oh. the, from the Catholic Church. So many of their customers were Catholics. Man. Yeah. But Catholics don't read the Bible. So, yeah. No, so that's they, true. So they knew, they, they knew we weren't Catholics. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. All right. So we're, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll get past Starbucks. Let's move on to our next story. The Muslims, the religion of peace, an expression of brotherly love during the wonderful feast of Ramadan, decided to firebomb a store <clears throat> over Allah socks. Yes. Is that, is, is yes. that a real story? <laughs> yep. Several pairs of socks emblazoned with the word Allah were put on sale. Islam is a peaceful religion, except when uh, it comes to issues with socks. So anyway, um, I digress. A Malaysian court charged five executives from a mini mart chain and its supplier with hurting religious feelings after several pairs of socks emblazoned with the word Allah were put on sale in one of its stores. Photos of the socks spread on social media, sparking public outrage. Remember when so remember when Burger King had to recall sacrilegious desserts? One guy was offended by a swirl in an ice cream cone, mm -hmm. and they had to. And then another another um, uh, one was um, uh, the Nike um, had recalled a shoe that the Muslims came claimed that a local resembling uh, uh, a logo resembling the the Arabic word for Allah was on it. So they had to re they had to totally take off the shoes. So anyway, well, these folks face prison time over the Allah socks, and Muslims have gone on a sock jihad uh, as a petrol bomb was thrown at the KK supermarket where the socks went on for sale. You know, so, actually, you know, I I do I I have heard a little bit about this story. I heard okay. while they were throwing the petrol bomb at the store, they changed their chant from Allah Akbar to Allah Sakbar. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> wow. So moving on to our next story. Uh, this one's about the economy. Now, to show how well the economy is just on all four cylinders, actually under, under Biden, it's like 12 cylinders. Every piston is just going and running at 100% accuracy and Full load. And, you know, this is one of the signifiers. Pawn shop inventory around the United States is yep. exploding. Yep. And that's crazy. That's how, that's how, and I'm going to explain, that's how you kind of look at things. And that's how these guys look at things. When pawn shop inventory is up, the economy is doing bad. And when it's down, the economy is doing good. But pawn shop inventories are exploding as failing U.S. economy hammers those at the bottom of the econ economic food chain. The lamestream media and Biden administration continue denying that we are in the midst of a very painful economic downturn. You can say that uh, it's, it's crazy what they're saying. Um, anyone that attempts to claim that the U.S. Economy, economy is in good shape is just delusional. Unfortunately, it is those at the bottom of the economic food chain that are being hurt the most. If you want to know what is really going on with the economy, pawn shops are a great place to look. 
when the economy is doing well, pawn shop inventories tend to go down because people aren't pawning much stuff. So what are we seeing in stage early stages of 2024? USA Today interviewed one pawn shop owner who said he had a ton of inventory, gold rings, pearl necklaces, vintage cowboy boots, silver belt buckles, stereos, and ticking clocks. The only thing I'm short of is space, he said. The same article also pointed out that two of the largest publicly traded pawn shop corporations in the U.S., which between them own 1,700 pawn shops nationwide, are reporting growing inventory. So if anyone tries to convince you that the economy is doing well, these numbers should end the debate unless you're delusional. Another aspect is the home foreclosures we're seeing, and they are exploding. The overall suffering of the past couple of years has been very painful. The truth is that it isn't even worth comparing to what is in front of us. So Maranatha, Lord, come quickly. It's coming. So amen. just keeping everybody on board. And to accentuate the crisis that we have mm. as far as our economy, now we want to add new people in which we will support them until they find jobs which will be non-existent as yeah. everything becomes automated. Uh, the border crisis is also breaking our census. Uh -huh. Yeah, the border crisis has completely upended Census Bureau's population stats. So immigration in the U.S. has risen so rapidly, it beat out federal projection by decades. The total number of immigrants rose to a record high of 51.4 million as of February 2024. That's legal and illegal, right? So that represents 15.5% of the total population. The Census Bureau published projections in 20 in November of 2023. So last November, which estimated that the share of immigrants in the U.S. would not reach 15.5% until at least 2039. So it makes all projections obsolete, right? So um, now this 15.5% includes both immigrant and already in the U.S. and legally and illegally undocumented. So it is estimated that the number of illegals grew by 6.4 million so far under Biden. So the enormous scale of illegal immigrants over the past three years has implications for nearly every aspect of the American society, uh, someone said. If this current trend continues, the total foreign born shares of the U.S. population will reach 60 million by the end of second uh, second Biden term um, in 2028. I think it's going to be much higher if he if he gets selected and it, it'll be selected. So <clears throat> anyway, at this present point, the number of illegals in the U.S. is higher than at any point of American history. And Thomas Sewell said something, and he's a super smart dude. Um, if you are not prepared to use force to defend civilization, then be prepared to accept barbarism. So that was a great, that was a great quote, because it's the truth. Uh, and we're, we're seeing it. We're seeing diseases we're seeing that it. have been dead yeah. and eradicated from the United States being imported back in. Yeah. We're seeing violence, like on a scale that we've never seen as far as immigrant crime. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, I think, I think the crimes are getting more brutal in, yeah. in, in many ways. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it. Yeah. And they're letting them go too. Yes. You know, murder, yeah. you know, and yeah, these guys, I mean, busted, yeah, that guy who got, who I talked about, he was busted. He was, he was, he was arrested 21 times. Yes. And, and the uh, Soros funded uh, DAs around the United States oh, are more yeah. than willing to let them out. Cashless yeah. bail. Yep. 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 Crazy. Yep. While we're talking about the uh, the foibles of our time, scientists have decided that they're going to create the perfect chromosome. Talk to yeah. me about. Talk to me about so that. It's a, yeah, it's a designer chromosome, and and it's a landmark genetic engineering feat. So, um, it's just it, it's it's more confirmation that we're just in the days of Noah. All right. So it's it's weird. We have the earlier you know LBGTQ thing. So we're in the days a lot. You know, and then and this is uh, Luke 17, right? And then we're in the days of Noah as well. So, the, but the, they are revolutionizing gene therapy. The process discovered bypasses a common hurdle that has hindered progress in this field for decades. Artificial chromosomes are lab-made structures designed to mimic the function of a natural chromosome. Beyond medical applications, the researchers believe their approach could also be valuable for agricultural bi biotechnology, such as engineering pest resistant or high yield crops. So 
you know, that's that's and another thing. They're so, not doing that and, for and do, like in other words, more genetically. Years? Yeah, more genetically modified food. It's just what America needs, right? Yeah. I've read Revelation probably 500 times and plus, you know, and this will not end well for you guys. Just know that if you keep going down this road, I'm warning you guys, in essence, they will try to replace themselves. They, they will try to replace God with themselves. And we read that over and over again. So, mm. yeah, just just I'm just warning you guys. Watch out. Uh, Gadaga, anyone? Has anybody seen that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's the world they're building, it seems. You yes, know? absolutely. Yes. You have a kid, you're going to take the kid there, and they're going to say, oh, yeah. you know what? We could correct all of this right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Crazy movie. Terrible, terrible world yes. that, that, that predicts. Let's talk a little bit about uh, replacement theology. Israel is, as we both know, a prerequisite for the end times. Yes. And yet... Even in Christian camps, even yes. with people who read the same Bible as we do, they want to lessen the significance of Israel. Yep, yep. And it and it's a replacement theology is gaining some wings, and it's in in the Christian community too, and it's pure heresy. So the belief that God is done with Jewish people is sheer crazy thought. According to the Bible, Israel is epicenter to the end times. It is. I'm not saying that Israel is flawless. Uh, God never says that either. All right. So he, he definitely doesn't say that. But we read in scripture expressions of God's affection for Israel. Israel is the main stage of God's end time final acts. The Bible from cover to cover speaks about Israel and Jerusalem as a centrality. So you better be careful how you treat the Jews and the nation of Israel. So many people throughout history have tried and failed to destroy them. There are pastors and teachers. I use quotes on that out there telling that Israel doesn't matter anymore as a nation. But Jeremiah 31, verse 31 through 33, God promises to make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. I will be their God and they will be my people. If there is no Israel, then the Bible is wrong. Simple. And if you do not believe in the Bible, but you don't want to have anything to do with Israel, if, you're, if you destroy Israel, then the Messiah cannot come back to Israel. I will finish with this little rant by saying Israel is paramount to understanding the end times. God is for Israel. The world is not. My heart goes out to the Palestinian people. It does. May God bring salvation, hope, and peace to all who seek him. So that was my little rant on that. I mean, my, my opinion of the whole situation is it's very interesting to me how we can talk about I think there's 75 major countries in the, in the entire world that can be Muslim, can be majority Muslim countries. In fact, just if we're talking about Arabic, we're talking about in the teens of countries that are Arabic. Yet one country that is Jewish is in, in imag unimaginable to the, the entire Muslim world, it seems. That, mm. that tells me all I need to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And what, what, what the Bible talks about this. The Bible talks about anti-Semitism. We call it that. That's a modern word, but it talks about this in the end times. It's what what happens is the 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 you know Jews and Christians. Those are the ones that yeah, yep. Well, we have a confession from the American media. Finally, um, now I don't <laughs> know if we're going to be able to go live on YouTube about this, but if you want to catch, you, you want me to you want me to do it. We're going to do it, okay. but I'm just saying, if there happens to be no sound and a little yeah. disclaimer on, you can yeah. catch us on Rumble, you can catch us on X, but we're probably going to have to censor this on YouTube because they still deny reality. You yeah, see. yeah, it's it's beyond, it's beyond, but don't, you know, sorry about, yeah, but the
if you had to, yeah, if you had to, yeah, if you had to, if you had to censor me, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was quite the story. Um, yeah. Well, it's in the Washington Post, so I didn't know. I, I did it I mean, last. You, you would yeah. figure the Washington Post, which is owned by Amazon, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oppo, yeah. you know, is is seems to be mainstream media. And it was yeah. a, it was a editorial or was it a uh, uh, Washington? You know, I said Washington Post. It was Washington Times. Sorry, sorry, Washington sorry. Washington, 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 Washington Times. Washington Post is still a CIA operated. Um, they get they get paid by the CIA. They're 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 a CIA operated uh, group. Washington, yeah, Washington Times. Times. Yeah, Washington Times is more uh, more conservative. So got it. But still, but Understood. still, they have yeah, yep, 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 yep. Sorry, All right. my bad. So, no problem. Our next story: Washington uh, scientists can't explain why 2023 was so hot, but they mm -hmm. they agree it's definitely yes. climate change, and it's definitely something we've done. Yep. And, and the scientists failed to fully explain the record global heat. So 2023 was the Earth's hottest year on record, which blew far beyond what statistical climate models had predicted. Scientists warned that the world may be entering uncharted territory. This year has confounded climate scientists. You know, they're going to be confounded for the rest of, until Jesus comes back. Now they are all scrambling to explain why 2023 was so hot. And they predicted 2024 will rank among the five hottest years on record. I can save them a lot of unneeded worry or investigation. I have two scripture verses. One is Revelation 7, 16. They will hunger no longer, nor thirst anymore, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. And it's after we get raptured out of here, you know, we, we believe that, the, that um, you know, who are these? These are the ones who have come out of the Great Tribulation. You know, earlier in, in Revelation 7. And when we're out of here, Revelation 16, 8 to 9, it still gets hotter. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to scorch people with fire. And they were scorched by the fierce heat, and they cursed the name of God, who had the power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So those are the two, you know, Revelation verses that, that stand out. All right. Well, so we have come, and we're going to we're gonna actually initiate something that we've been forgetting to do. Um, guess what time it is? Ah. Forgot all about that bumper. I, I mean, yes. I've, I've had it for all this time. We have not been. That yet. is awesome! Wow. All right, news shorts, news blast. Joe Biden declared <laughs> Joe Biden. Joe Biden declared Easter Sunday transgender day of visibility. You are America, and my entire administration and I have your back. He stated, straight up mocking God, calling evil good and good evil, just as Isaiah five twenty said. So, talk to a ninety year old. I talked to a ninety year old guy the other day, and and. In his entire life, he's never seen an administration purposely taken down the country like this one. So, yeah, he should have picked, he should have, well, we're taping on April Fool's Day today. So, he should have picked April 1st, as everybody, what everybody said. But this is like declaring National Bacon Week, uh, you know, during Ramadan. So, this is, it's so, it, it's beyond. And uh, next news short a transgender illegal was killed by a, another illegal in broad daylight. The DA has ordered not to charge him. This violent illegal was previously charged with multiple felonies, including illegally having a gun. He was also arrested three days before the killing for driving without a license. What makes this especially terrible is that we know what the police and justice department will do if we try to protect ourselves. It's lawlessness. And the next one, we have a video for the DOJ is ordering Google to release the names and addresses of YouTube viewers who watch specific videos. This is absolutely terrifying. So video number five. Order Google to hand over the names, addresses, telephone numbers, and user activity of those who watch certain YouTube videos. The feds were trying to track down a criminal and were apparently tracking you in the process. The senior national correspondent, Kevin Cork, is live in D.C. with big news about Big Brother. Kevin, good evening. Evening, Trace. According to Forbes, the government asking Google to give up names, addresses, phone numbers, and user activity of all account users who access certain YouTube videos back in January of 2023, as you mentioned, as part of a larger criminal investigation. Now, in another instance, police also asked Google to provide a list of accounts that viewed and or interacted with 
YouTube live streams that could lead to information again on what they claim was a police search. Privacy experts tell Fox Business tonight this discovery is absolutely terrifying, saying it allows the police to target people for simply consuming content. Quote, it's unconstitutional, it's terrifying, and it's happening every day. These YouTube warrants are just as chilling, allowing police to target people simply for the content they consume. No one should fear and knock at the door from police simply because of what YouTube's algorithm serves up. Now, the discovery also comes as Meta is said to be changing its algorithm to restrict Instagram users' access to political information. And, of course, as an upcoming Supreme Court ruling could set new standards for free speech. And while it's still unclear tonight if Google gave authorities the requested information, the company tells Fox Business this evening, quote, We have a rigorous process designed to protect the privacy and constitutional rights of our users. Liars. It goes on. We examine yeah. each demand for legal validity consistent with developing case law and we routinely push back against overbroad or otherwise inappropriate demands for user data including objecting to some demands entirely Liar. now the doj tonight has yet to respond to our request for comment it is a huge story a bombshell some would say trace one that will obviously garner further examination mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Uh, all right, I'll that. continue on. Hey, watch you play the next video. Let's play video number six. Look at the number of officers who showed up for slain officer Jonathan Diller's funeral. This is crazy. This is the same event that Governor Kathy Hochul was confronted at. She got kicked out. Look at all those New York officers. That's beyond, beyond. Well, and then, and like I said, the killer had been in and out of jail. This is the this is the guy who had been in and out of jail twenty one times. Not that other guy. Our system's broken, guys. Um, the next, uh, you know, when the next story, when American voters were asked to list Joe Biden's top accomplishments since entering the White House, the number one result was nothing. A new poll is revealed, and um, and here's and here's what we were tripping out on. You were tripping. You were trying to look at this. Here's a picture. This is once again the 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 Simpsons program predictive programming at its finest. There's a cargo ship, and there's P Diddy. You know, <laughs> oh, that's man. crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and religious themed. And the next one, religious themed design banned from White House Easter egg. Um, art. So so you could not. Children egg designs are part of the annual White House Easter egg roll traditions. The art contest is part of the White House's traditions. A flyer for the contest stated the eggs must not include religious symbols or overtly religious themes. So I wonder if they have the same limitations for Ramadan. And it's a joke. And and um, yeah, so not that I not that I agree with paganized the, the paganized version of Easter. But it was definitely a, not a celebration of anything, you know, even even calling it Easter. I don't want to get into it. But the last story um, is American children talked about what they want as opposed to children from the Middle East. And this is sobering. And I want to finish with this. Guys, watch this. If you had one wish, what would you wish for? For an iPhone. To be rich. A million dollars. A trillion dollars. One hundred dollars. A billion dollars. A billion dollars. A billion dollars. A billion dollars. A dollars. A Mm, that's sobering. Yeah, very yeah, sobering. sobering. Yep, and I know that's that's uh, that's in just in the Middle East, and then you could go to Africa, same thing. You go to parts and, of Asia, uh, same thing. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So just keep in prayer, people. That that you just. 
you just appreciate, you know, we, we're still the most blessed nation in the world and uh, it's, it's going away and, and God's judging us and he's taking it away, but we're still going to be far better off than, than, than most who are, are, you know, hungry and starving right now. So just thank the Lord for what you have. Amen. So the scripture I have for you this week, um, you know, going through Easter reminded me um, with my family being everywhere and my family being, you know, both believers and unbelievers. Yeah. Um, I was reminded of the words of Christ in Matthew 12, 46 through 48, uh, 50 actually. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and his brother stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of the Father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. And I just want to remind everybody that listens to, you know, you believe in the same God as we do, for the most part. Um, you are our extended family, and we 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 sh we need to show you love the same way that we show it to our our earthly families. Our earthly yeah. families are given for a time, but these spiritual families that we are with with you, with other people, with other Christians, with our fellow church members, whoever we have fellowship with, it that is truly our mother and our brothers, our sisters. So I just want to remind everyone to, to cherish not only your earthly family, but more, more so even more your heavenly family, the family that God has given you to extend and to also replace some of those who are already left and are no longer here. That's my, uh, yeah. that's my Easter thought. That's a great thought. Life. That's a great thought. Great verse. Great thought. Great thought, Chip. Well, this concludes 50 episodes of Ken's Corner. We, once again, we are so grateful for all of you. Um, mm -hmm. We're so grateful to be in this position to be able to talk about the news like we do, to, to also do it in a way that is, you know, pointing always back to God, pointing back to the fact that he has a plan. And we just want you to know that moving forward, as long as we have, we, we're not promised tomorrow, but we are promised uh, that whether here or there, we'll, we'll be greeting you. Ken, mm -hmm. my brother, God bless you. Truly love God you, bless. brother. Thank you. Love you too, bud.